Hey what's up Jason here from Unity3D.college. In this video I want to show you how to set up a simple grid system where you can place items or objects on a grid and then kind of customize that grid. So you can see here I've got a grid object and I've got some gizmos drawing. Oh I drew that a little bit too close so let's go back to like a one. Here they're set one meter apart. I'm going to set them to maybe like a, some off number. Maybe I'll go like a one point five nine something non-uniform press play and then as I click I just drop down cubes on the grid points so you see each one of the dots that's where these things are going and I can adjust this thing so I could go to a two it's not gonna move my objects but as I place them now they'll snap onto this new grid and then I can also offset the thing so let me show you that if I drag this thing around a little bit maybe I've moved it right around there get it kind of in position. Imagine you're going to have a play area with part of the grid, you know, maybe blocked out and there's other stuff around. You don't want the grid always in a hard coded spot. So here you can see I just click and place. And again, if I move the grid, I'm not moving my objects right now, Oops. but I am moving where I can place them. So here you see again, the spots are lining up on those yellow dots. So let me show you how this works real quick. The first thing I want to show is just the placement thing. So here I have a cube placer script on an empty game object. It gets a reference to a grid object. I'll show you that in a minute. And we just cache that in awake. Then in the update method, I look to see if the user clicked the left button with get mouse button down zero. Then we do a ray cast into the scene. So we store a hit info. We create a ray using camera.main.screen point to ray and pass in the mouse position. It just does a ray straight in there to figure out where I clicked. Then we do a ray cast and pass the hit info into hit info. So if we hit something, you know, we clicked on the, the terrain object there or whatever it is that we have there, we'll get the point. And then we call place cube near and just pass in the point. Place cube near is really, really simple. We get a position by telling the grid to give us the nearest point on the grid to where we clicked. I should really call this like click point. So this is the point where the user clicked and we just tell the grid to give us that. Then we create a primitive cube, set the transform position to the position that the grid gives us. And here I actually have a commented outline that's just creating a sphere exactly where I click. That's just to show like the click spot versus the uh, cube position. I have it disabled now though. So let's go into the grid and see how this actually works. It's not too complicated. So on the grid I have a size field that's serialized so we show, see it in the editor. It's one here but you saw in the editor I went to I think it was 1.59. I have a public size that I don't actually need to expose so I just deleted that. And then what we do is, um, I'm going to skip this part for one second. We get the position of the, the original vector. We divide it by the size. And the size has to be a float here just so that um, the math works out. If we divide the int by the float, we're going to get something wrong. We want to have a float and a float. Plus, this lets us have decimal points in there. Then we round it to the nearest integer. So we take the x position divided by the size, round it to the nearest integer, and store that in a variable called x count. Now, again, we could cut this all down to like a single line or two, but it would be a lot harder to read. Uh, we do the same for Y and Z, just to get the number of points across the grid that this thing is um, placed at. Then we create a new vector 3 that's the result, and we cast the X count, Y count, and Z count as floats again, because we need to multiply them back by the size. And then we um, return that. So we are subtracting and adding transform.position at the beginning on line 10 and then down here on line 21. That's just so that we get the offset working. So that way if I move the grid along, the points move and the clicking still works in those points. Without this, you'll see um, the offset either won't work if you have none of these, or if you only have the plus equals, as you move it, the object will be further and further from where you click. You have to subtract the position and then re-add it after the math is done. Um, and then here in my gizmos, I'm just looping through 40 by 40 and getting the nearest point to whatever position it is that I've selected here and then drawing a sphere there. That's just so I can see those little points there and visualize them easily. So that's all there really is to it. Um, I think it's kind of cool. It's pretty simple to use. Just create a grid, drop it in there. 
call get nearest point on grid and find your nearest point and you could use this for moving an object around for placing them or just about anything else so i hope this is somewhat helpful um if you have questions about this feel free to ask below this was a response to another youtube video where somebody asked a question about popping things on grids so if you have a question semi-related or just a different subject you're interested in um of course just drop a comment uh, I'm also going to put a link to the Facebook group down below too, so if you'd like to join that and just post questions, comments, or requests, feel free to do that. Alright, thanks again for watching, and uh, don't forget to like and hit subscribe.